Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to another installment of the Peaceful Solution Character Education Teacher Certification course. If you're uh, in the outlying areas around the world watching, or if you're here at the Peaceful Solution headquarters, you can be seated. Thank you for joining us. I, I do want to remind you a couple things before we get started tonight, and that is, number one, if you're watching on Facebook, we do have the uh, teacher's manuals online where you can click the drop down menu at the top where it says download the manual and you will see uh, the third book which is the self-control unit the teacher's manual that we're in right now uh, I also want to remind you that the peaceful solution uh, live classes are also on their they're streaming on a, a, I think it's peacefulsolution.org just at the top it'll say online classes go ahead and just click there and you can and you can watch from there when the classes are live from 5:30 to 6:30 central time on Sundays and Wednesdays so having said that we're going to go ahead now and pick up where we left off in the last class as you recall we're in chapter 5 maintaining your self control we're in the self control unit and uh, we left off on page 119 and I told you we'd be learning more about what positive influences are what negative influences are uh, but before we get started we're gonna do a little bit of review and let's first of all go back to page um, lesson plan 5c actually uh, I'm sorry lesson plan 5d Lesson Plan 5D, and we're going to look at number three, because this is what we're going to be doing this evening. It says, tell students that having clear definitions of positive and negative influences will allow them to better distinguish between the two. And that word to distinguish, it just simply means to tell the difference between one thing and another. Have students turn to page 119 and 120 in their handbooks and read the sections, what are positive influences and what are negative influences completing the exercises and we'll be doing that here in just a moment after we go over a little bit about what we went over on let's turn over to page 117 maintaining our self-control we learned that you know we were asked what was our most valuable possession and you know everybody's different everybody has different personalities so they're all gonna have different uh, things that they value you know that they think are important some people value education, some people value, uh, you know, some kind of trade. Um, some people value reading books, some people don't like reading books. Some people more, would more value reading Kindle books online. But that's just personal preference, it's personal choice. That's our, that's our personality. But what we learned is, whatever it is that we value, we have to treat it with, you know, care and we need to maintain it, we need to guard it, we need to protect it, okay, because if we don't, it can get ruined, lost, or stolen, okay, and that includes, you know, uh, you know, well, I won't go there yet, let me just say that in the second paragraph, it says, to maintain anything is to preserve its worth and keep it in the best working condition. A positive character is one of the most important possessions you can own and value, you know, now, how are you going to own a positive character? Is it something you're born with? Are we born with a positive character? No. It's something we have to instill within us through education, you know, and the only way you can do it thoroughly and the right way is through the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. And then once it's instilled in your heart and your mind through, through reading, through practice, through uh, repetition of, of, of putting these principles and techniques into, into practice over and over and over and over. And of course, you're going to stumble and you're going to fall occasionally, but you get back up and you keep going. If you continue to do this, you know, you will become a person of integrity. But once you become that, you've also got to protect it. You can't just think, I got this now. I got this. I got this. Remember, that's, that's not being humble. That's thinking highly of yourself. That's thinking too highly. Remember, any of us can fall into any kind of trap. 
there's all kinds of curveballs and pitfalls out there, so we don't want to get too confident in that way. You know, we always want to remember, if I don't practice what I've been taught in the Peaceful Solution, I too can slip up. So we have to be careful and guard our character and take precautions to protect it. And in this way, we can continue to make positive decisions that will benefit not only us, but everyone around us. And that's the great thing about the Peaceful Solution. You know, it's not just about you. Remember, it's not... We're not, we're not practicing selfishness, you know. It's about helping other people as well. And you're a benefit to others when you don't steal, when you don't, when you don't uh, do anything to, to uh, uh, harass people or, you know, disrespect others or treat them the way you wouldn't want to be treated. When you treat people the right way, you become a benefit to everyone you're in, in your environment. And it ripples out, too. Now, in the... Uh, Let's see, let's go ahead and turn over now to page 118. We covered the question of the day, which is what are influences? And we learned that an influence is something or someone who can affect the way we think, the way we feel, and the way we act. And boy, oh boy, you better believe, we better believe, influences, we can, we're all affected by them. We can't think that we're not. I don't care how old we are, how young we are, or how old, how old we are. We are all influenced by things around us and even things we don't see, you know, as we showed in the video of the, um, um, the uh, subliminal messages that the government put out in the 1960s, you know, about, you know, in the uh, na national, national anthem that they would play before you, when the TV was going off the air, uh, you know, in the, in the uh, what you call it, the uh, subtitles, uh, the hidden messages that were there about obeying the government don't uh, don't uh, uh, you know don't you dare or rebel rebellion will not be tolerated etc you know um, these things are all around us it's not just there it's been going on for a long 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 time you know and they they put these hidden messages in a lot of different places some of them could be positive you know, like I told you about the one they were playing on the, in the department stores to keep people from stealing, or at least try to influence them not to steal. But some of them can be very harmful. Some of them are uh, very, very nefarious. You know, they're trying to get you to do things that are not appropriate. So you got to be very careful and not think, oh, no, nothing influences me. In the third, in the second paragraph there on page 118 it says there's many other influences they range from subtle and harmless to obviously dangerous in fact some influences are so subtle you might not even realize you're being influenced to think or behave in a particular way and that's what we went into the subliminal messages etc so we're going to shift gears now we're going to go into page 119 and we've already read the lesson plan for 119 and 120 so let's go ahead and get started here what are positive influences? Now, while we're reading this, I'd like you to put up the, the visual for everyone to look at. It says, positive influences will motivate you to make choices and decisions that will build your character. A positive influence will not conflict with a moral choice. Positive influences can come in many different forms. They can be a person, an experience, a book that you've read, or even a show that you've seen. And then it gives the example that, you know, your parents have always encouraged you to take your education seriously and to pay attention to the world news. They want you to be aware of what's going on in the world around you. And why would that be important? You know, why is it important to keep up with your local news, world news, what's taking place in our society? Why is that so important? Because if you really want a well-rounded education, you've also got to know who are your political leaders. You know who are what's what's the what are the uh, events that are taking place in my area or around the world. You know what? How are people uh, behaving? You know what? What kind of character are they displaying? These are the kind of things that we need to know as teachers. We need to keep up with world events because as we learn them, we can also share them with our students so they can see the everyday application of the peaceful solution or the lack of the application of the peaceful solution in the behavior of the people. 
So you got to know, of course, you also have to take what you read in the news with a grain of salt, right? Is all media trustworthy? No, you'll find that many, many news stories are slanted. (laughs) You know, you could watch uh, Fox News and you could get the uh, conservative viewpoint. You could watch NBC or MSNBC and you could get the the, uh, Democratic viewpoint. Okay, so they're all pushing their own agendas. They all have their own ideas. They all have their own uh, 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 political aspirations that they're pushing. So you have to be careful what you're listening to because it's not all going to be this, it's not all going to be true facts. Remember, we learned in the character unit, you've got to get the facts. You've got to make sure they're correct before you make a decision. Okay. You can't just believe everything you see, everything you hear, etc. Okay, if you want to make a proper decision, you can't do that. Okay, so remember, you know, uh, positive influence, as it says, come in many different forms, you know, and, and people, experiences, books. I remember in the character unit, we went over all those things that were considered influences. Basically, almost everything's an influence. Colors, right? Uh, you know, magazines, billboards, we're being bombarded with influences constantly. Not all of them are negative, but there's a lot of negative influences out there, and we've got to be careful to be able to distinguish or tell the difference between what a positive influence is and a negative influence. Do you remember how to spot a positive, or a, we, we've talked about it before, do you, you know how to tell the difference between right and wrong? Simply put, If it's right, it doesn't bring harm to you or anybody else or the environment. If it's wrong, it brings harm to you or somebody else in the environment. Now, but how would you know it would bring harm to you? You have to get educated, right? You've got to get all the facts. You've got to learn about these things. You've got to be an investigator. You've got to know the who, the why, the what, the where, the when. You've got to look behind the curtain. You can't just believe the facade, what's on the front. Remember, that's like personality, right? Do you remember the first lesson in the character unit? Or not in this, I'm sorry, not in the character unit, but it's more than meets the eye. I think it is in the character unit. Yeah, hold on. Let me look here. I brought brought my book with me so I can check. I can check myself. I'm going to fact check myself. Okay? Yeah, more than meets the eye, chapter one. That means when you see something, it might not be what it appears whether that's a person, whether that's a book. You know, you could look at the cover of this book right here. This is one of our older manuals of the character unit. And you could think, that doesn't look very interesting. It's a gray cover, kind of dark. There's no flashy picture on there you know, or anything, you know. That doesn't look like a very exciting book or a very helpful book or whatever, right? Can you judge a book by its cover? No, man, you got to look inside the book. You got to start reading because that book that you think, man, that doesn't look very, uh, very interesting. That might be the one book that turns your life completely around, right? So you can't judge people by the cover either. And you've also learned that you can't look at a situation and think you know what's going on, even though you think you see what you're seeing or you think you hear what you're hearing. You might it might not be what it appears to be. So we've got to be careful to look and get educated and get all this information before we decide whether something's positive, whether something's negative, whether it's right or wrong. We need to get the information. So uh, it could be a book or a show, etc. Let's look at page one. Tw- oh, I'm sorry. So then it asks us to go over this uh, with the students. It tells us to write on the lines below about a positive influence in your life and how it has affected you. And for me, I would say, you know, uh, if you could put that visual back up again, that first visual, my my positive influence, those were some of mine right there. Okay, you know, my my, my younger teacher, when I was younger, that's not my actual teacher there, that's color picture, it would be black and white. But, uh, you know, my, my first and second grade teachers were a great influence on me. 
my experiences fishing in Alaska, my catching my first fish was really exciting. Uh, and as I got older, you know, my values changed and I started, you know, trying to correct my life. And that book right there, that Peaceful Solution Manual with the author right there on the front, he was a great inspiration to me and a great uh, motivator and a great uh, role model, a positive influence in my life. And then, you know, watching Peaceful Solution classes on television, you know, because I watch them too. I don't just come here, you know, I also watch them online and I, and I, those are positive influences in my life. So let's go to page 120 and let's look at negative influences. What are negative influences? Can you put that next visual up as I'm reading? That should be easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Negative influences can cause you to make choices that are immoral. Immoral. Immoral means not moral, meaning they don't follow the rules. They don't follow the guidelines that will bring peace, joy, satisfaction, health, safety. They go against those things, okay? An immoral choice can have a negative effect on your character. It can result in harm to yourself and others. Like that Gatlin gun or whatever that guy's got, you know, I mean, that's not, you know, do you think he's shooting that to bring peace to somebody? Even though they call their guns a peace, right? I remember one time I had a peaceful solution set up in uh, uh, Laredo, Texas, and, and uh, we had a little, we had a little, uh, 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 a little booth when we were, we were showing people about the peaceful solution, and a security guard came up to the, uh, came up to our booth and he said and he said what's the peaceful solution and I said well I started showing him a little bit about the program I gave him a brochure and I told him how we need to teach moral character education to children to to help them to make better decisions and we can have a more peaceful world and he goes oh I already got my peace and he, he put his hand on his gun on his side he goes I got my peace <laughs> and I'm like well we're trying to get we're trying to get past that you know we're trying to we're trying to bring a different kind of peace now, you know, because <laughs> those things don't bring peace. You know, weapons, uh, force, that doesn't bring peace. It doesn't, it, you know, it might bring peace. You might think it brings you peace when you shoot that person that won't shut their mouth because now they're going to finally shut up. But are you going to have peace while you're rotting away in prison and you got a roommate named Bubba and he's taking all your commissary? Is that peace? You got to live in a prison where everyone's not practicing self-control and you don't know where your life is hanging on a thread day by day. You don't know who's going to do what to you. That's living in peace now? No, it's not. So an, an immoral choice can have a negative effect on your character. Can you put the visual back up? Well, thank you very much. It can result in harm to yourself and others. Like positive influences, negative influence can also come in different forms. For example, the new boy in school tries to talk you into skipping class and going to the arcade. And I, I do remember I've been influenced very positively by a man that I know, uh, a very great man. I, I, I mentioned this in one of the classes a few months ago, I said, I don't think those arcades even exist anymore, you know, those video arcades. And uh, he actually texted me after class because he watches the Peaceful Solution program, and he goes, you know what? One of the most popular places in Abilene right now is a video arcade. I said, they got a video arcade? He said, yeah, it's one of the most popular places in town. All the children go there and waste their quarters on games. I don't know if it's just quarters now, but it could be 50 cents or a dollar or who knows what they're charging for these games. So the new boy in school tries to talk you into skipping class and going to the arcade. Can you recall a negative influence in your life? What effect did this influence have on your ability to make positive choices? Well, I don't know about you, but I can think of a lot of negative influences, okay, and I had in my life, whether they were quote unquote friends which I learned later on they weren't really my friends, they were just acquaintances, running buddies, drug buddies, drinking buddies, um, what else did we call them? Um, I don't know, road dogs. 
uh, but we weren't friends. Because remember, we learned in the acceptance unit that friends encourage one another to make right decisions, not decisions that bring harm to somebody or ourselves or the environment. So it says, uh, use the lines below to write a short paragraph describing how this negative influence affected your life. Well, I can tell you right now, those negative influences, you know, that talked me into doing certain things that, you know, I did it because I wanted to be accepted, I wanted to be cool, you know, uh, I wanted to be, uh, you know, I wanted to have friends, you know, so to speak. And, uh, and I did some pretty crazy things to keep them. But what makes them any different than gangs that tell you, hey, in order to join our gang, you got to go out and shoot that person. You got to go steal this item or whatever, you know, and, 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 and you know, to join the gang. It's the same thing. It's, it's, it's it's causing it's asking someone to do something to bring harm to themselves to be your friend or to join their club or whatever else and you don't want to do that that's not positive conformity y'all remember about conformity conformity is an influence remember we learned that in the uh character unit okay so let's look now back to our lesson plan let's go back to the lesson plan by the way are you enjoying the hot weather <laughs> I see you're practicing, uh, what's that positive character trait called? Optimism? <laughs> Great. Be optimistic, you know, that it'll be a cold winter coming up. <laughs> okay, so let's look at uh, LP5D number four. And uh, no, you know what? I'm wrong. Sorry about that. We don't need to read that yet. Uh, page 121 is not included in step three, but we have to read it before we go to the next step. So let's go ahead and go back to page 121. I was hoping somebody would catch me, but they didn't. So, Okay, so let, what we want to look at now is, can you put up the visual I have for this one so we can, we can the online people can also see? It says, it is up to you to practice self-control in order to recognize if you are being influenced in a positive or negative way. Use the STOP acronym to help you practice self-control to avoid being negatively influenced. Now, it was down here. Somebody moved it. Again. I had that STOP sign. But you all remember the STOP acronym and the peaceful solution? Does anybody remember? You do? Okay. Oh, wow. Look, it just appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> okay. So can you all see this? Can you uh, show this? Stop acronym? Okay. Stop. Remember, we need to stop so we can think clearly about what our options are and proceed with the right choice. Remember, a right choice doesn't bring harm to ourselves or others or the environment. Okay? All right. So, but you can use this same acronym and apply it to self-control. It says it is up to you to practice self-control in order to recognize if you're being influenced in a positive or negative way. Use the STOP acronym to help you practice self-control to avoid being negatively influenced. So in this case, the STOP will be STOP, recognize that the influence is negative, okay? Now, how are you gonna know if the influence is negative? Well, you already know that violence of any kind, all right, as an example, violence is not positive, it's not going to bring any kind of, po it's not beneficial to you, it's not going to help you grow in becoming a moral person, as an example. So if you're watching violent TV, violent movies, you're listening to violent music, it's up to you to recognize that that influence is negative, okay? And then you need to think. This will affect the choices I make and could lead me to compromise what I know to be right. Because you know as well as I do, if we did the things that we watch in the movies, the negative things that we see in the movies, or if we did the things that we see on the TV set that are negative, sleeping around, using drugs, using force, violence to solve our problems, etc., you know where you would end up. 
You know where your life would end up. You, you would be in jail. You'd be in prison or you'd be dead or you'd be seriously harmed or you would end up seriously harming someone else. So you need to know that this, even if you don't, even if you don't end up in jail, <laughs> it's still going to have an effect on your character. It's going to bring it down. It's not, you're not going to be building it up in a positive way. You're going to be bringing it down in a negative way. So you need to know that it's going to have an effect on your, on your attitude, the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act. And then you need to consider your options. You need to make a choice to avoid negative influences. You have to make the choice. It's your choice. Nobody can choose for us, right? It's up to us to make the choice. And uh, that's the great thing about, you know, freedom. Freedom to choose. Not freedom to do things that are wrong. Not freedom to make the wrong decisions. Even though you could make the wrong decisions, no one's stopping you from doing it. But is that what we want? We want a life filled with regrets, a life filled with diseases, and a life filled with troubles, lawyers, doctors, you know, you know medical bills, <laughs> lawyer bills. I mean, is this what we want? Nobody wants that. And then we need to proceed by making a decision to avoid, to avoid anything that can influence us in a negative way. We need to avoid it. You know, a wise person doesn't go into situations that can cause these things. You know, you don't, you don't turn the channel on to the, you know, the channel that you know there's going to be some kind of uh, bad things going on. You avoid it. You turn it to a different channel. You don't watch those things. You don't turn on the radio to the station where you know they're playing these kind of things. You avoid it. You stay away from it. You don't go to the movie house when they're playing, you know, these kind of films, you know, where they're showing violence or showing uh, people that aren't even clothed properly and things like this. You don't go to those things. You avoid those things. You stay away from it. You don't go and test out to see, well, let's see if I can watch it without it influencing me. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Sure. It's going to influence you. Whether I don't care how old you are either. It will have a negative effect on your character. So by consistently practicing self-control, you will be better able to make choices that will shield you from the effects of negative influences. Notice, it's your choices that shield you from these things. You're not shielded by magic, you know. Uh, you can't, uh, you know, think, well, you know, I have special protection, you know, you know, my guardian angels are going to protect me even though I go out and drink beer and drive, you know, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that jokingly, I actually see, do you realize cartels in Mexico, drug runners, uh, murderers, cold-blooded murderers actually have little religious relics uh, of uh, different religious um, figures that they think protect them in their wrongdoing <laughs> in their uh, you know in their drug running if they have that particular uh, object on their windshield in their car or sitting on the dash it's going to protect them and they can run drugs and they can murder and they can steal and they can do whatever and they're going to be protected you have protection in doing what's wrong is that what we've learned in the peaceful solution that you're protected by doing wrong no, you're protected by doing what's right. That's what keeps you safe. That's why rules are there for our safety. If we go outside the rules and we break the rules, we have no protection. None. We took our protection away. Similarly, will a condom protect you if you decide to go sleep with that girl that you're not married to? They want you to think that. But I've already told you, we've already taught you in the Peaceful Solution that there's no protection in breaking the rules. And I don't care who's telling you you're going to be protected. You need to know the facts. You've got to get the facts. You've got to know the Peaceful Solution facts and not let anybody sway your opinion and try to get you to go a different direction. So... Remember, everything you experience has the potential to affect your attitude behavior, and ultimately your character. 
The powerful negative influences of TV, movies, and peer pressure can affect your choice to make moral decisions or to make right decisions that don't break the rules, no, don't bring harm to anybody, including yourself or the environment. All right, now we can turn back to lesson plan five, page D, and we're going to look at number four because we're going to jump into another subject here. It says, explain to students that although there are many types of influences, this lesson will focus on five. TV, movies, video games, music, and peers. Instruct students to turn to page 122 to 125 and read the sections now showing. The violence continues, not as harmless as you might think, and monkey see, monkey do and complete the exercise on page 125. Emphasize that although these, these are sources of entertainment, in most cases they are negative influences that desensitize young adults to sexually explicit, violent, and aggressive acts. And that word desensitize, if you recall, we, we had that word before, thinking it's in the, mar in the glossary. Yeah, if you look on your glossary, on page 231 of this book, the word desensitize is defined as to lose the ability to be caring and concerned for the safety and well-being of someone else. Let me read that again. Desensitize. It means to lose the ability to be caring and concerned for the safety and well-being of someone else, or even your own safety and well-being. Remember? Your safety is important, but other people's safety is important as well. But this violence desensitizes us to that fact. Okay, let's turn over now to, let's see, page 122. And let's go ahead and read now showing. So it says, two major areas of influence in media entertainment are television and the movies. Although both of these forms of entertainment can be positive, they are more likely to be a source of negative influences. Now, why do you think that is? Why do you think it's more likely they're going to be negative? Well, let me give you a couple reasons why that's likely. Number one, are people being taught the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program in school? Are they being taught moral character all throughout their childhood? Are they being taught to avoid violence? Are they being taught to avoid uh, promis promiscuous sexual relations with people? Are they being taught to avoid that? Or are they being, t or are they being taught, go ahead, uh, if it feels good, do it. If you have a condom, do it, or whatever, <laughs> okay? That's what they're being taught. They're not being taught to avoid these things. Okay? So you got to remember these things. They're not being taught the things that you're being taught in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Okay, so they're going to be more likely to be a negative source of influence. But that's not the only reason. Here's the second reason. <laughs> Mula. Money. <laughs> riches let's go to the next visual I'll show you what I mean this is a list of the highest grossing films in history <laughs> um, before these films came out Gone with the Wind <laughs> was the highest grossing film adjusted for inflation which means, you know, back in the, you know, 50s or whenever it was made, the 40s or 50s, whenever Gone with the Wind came out, you know, going to a movie might have been 50 cents. So, you know, before, it wasn't anywhere near these numbers right here. This is the new generation here. This is the list of the highest grossing films. I'm going to read them off to you. These are the top 10. Avatar had a worldwide gross of almost $3 billion. What was Avatar? A bunch of violence. Number two, Avengers Endgame. More violence. That's from 2019. Almost three billion dollars worldwide. Titanic. 
It wasn't a it wasn't a movie about a ship, you know, that sank. It was about a movie where a boy and girl did things that they shouldn't be doing because they weren't married. <laughs> and it was teaching our children to do those very things that they were acceptable. That made almost three billion dollars too, just over two billion dollars. Then you had Star Wars: The Force Awakens from 2015, two billion sixty-eight million dollars. Then number four, or number five, you had Avengers Infinity War. Avengers, again. Infinity War, up made over just over $2 billion in 2018. Seems like people can't get enough of that Avengers because the other Avengers came out the next year and made almost $3 billion. Then you had Spider-Man, No Way Home, number six. Almost $2 billion worldwide in 2021. Wow, in 2021, COVID hit everywhere, and, you know, I guess people were still going to the movies and paying money. Jurassic World is number seven, almost one and a half billion dollars. The Lion King, one and a half billion dollars. The Avengers, again, the first installation of the Avengers made one and a half billion dollars in 2012. And then Fast and Furious, number seven, comes in at number ten, one and a half billion dollars. One and a half billion dollars worldwide. These are the list of highest grossing films according to Wikipedia. So do you see where the money is? You see where the money is? It's not in things that are positive. It's in this negativity right here. It's in negative, the negative movies. Second paragraph says, Did you know that according to the Nielsen Media Research 2000, the average child between the ages of 2 and 17 watch approximately 19 hours and 40 minutes of TV a week? That's almost an entire day of TV, or that's an, almost an entire day every week in front of the tube. Of course, now it's not the, the, the tube so much as it is the YouTube, right? It used to be the, the television, but now it's YouTube and other forms of media. In fact... Oh, by the way, can you show the next visual before I go into the TV part? This is Avengers, okay, from Wikipedia. The record, list of box office records set by Avengers Endgame. It's the highest grossing superhero film. Almost $3 billion. It made $500 million in three days. Three days. That's half a billion dollars in three days. People have a hunger, they have a thirst for violence, okay? That's proven, proven by these, these numbers here in, in these uh, box office records, okay? Go to the next slide, because I want to show about the Kaiser uh, uh, Family Foundation research, because Nielsen, you know, the Nielsen research, the Nielsen ratings, you know, the, I'm sure you've heard of Nielsen, Nielsen does the TV ratings and stuff, and they say that's outdated, man, because nobody really watches TV as much as they're watching uh, uh, computer online, or they're watching uh, Netflix, or they're watching, you know, they're renting videos or whatever else. They're not keeping track of that, so Nielsen's not very accurate anymore. So they did a research, they did some more research with the Kaiser Family Foundation, and it said... The Kaiser Family Foundation says kids ages 8 to 18 now spend, on average, a whopping 7.5 hours in front of a screen for entertainment each day. That's up from what we just read in the Peaceful Solution there. It says um, 4.5 of which are spent watching TV. Over a year, that adds up to 114 full days watching a screen for fun. There's 365 days in a year. They are spending a full 114 days in front of a screen being entertained. That's a third of their life. A third of their life being entertained in front of a screen. Now, what do you think they're being entertained by? Well, I just showed you what is very popular, and we'll get into a lot more of those things. It says, that's just the time they spend in front of a screen for entertainment. It doesn't include the time they spend on the computer at school for educational purposes or at home for homework. 
So they're spending an awful lot of time in front of a screen. And I think they did a, they did a research about three years ago and it showed that, I think they said because of the, uh, you know, the time children are sitting in front of a, a screen of some sort, you know, it has ruined their attention span, you know, their ability to concentrate on reading books or listening to the teacher in the classroom. And they said that a goldfish actually has a higher attention span than an average child. Okay? You know, that's, you know, how they know that is, have you ever had a, a, a tank of goldfish and the goldfish sits there and he's going, you know, through the glass, he's looking at you, you know, and then he turns and he swims off. Okay, he has a, he can do that longer than a child can sit there and look at a book and read without getting, you know, where was I? What was I thinking? You know, and they they can't remember what they just read, or they can read. I know this for a fact because I, I I taught in the public schools. They can read very well, but when you ask them to explain what they just read, they can't explain it because the comprehension of what they're reading is not there, even though they can read. They can't comprehend what they just read. Why am I telling you that? Because as teachers, that's why you are asked to ask questions. That's why you are asked to review things, etc., to see, did they comprehend, did they understand what you taught? Or did they just say, uh-huh, uh-huh? Because you know that's what they'll do. They'll sit there, did you understand? Uh-huh. But then when you start questioning them, they show they don't really understand. So that's where you got to go back, you got to rehearse, you've got to do the, uh, in, uh, you know, in all of our lesson plans, we also have the uh, uh, activities, the extra activities after each lesson. Uh, I'm trying to remember what we call them. If you know it, shout it out. Enrichment activities. You know, you can do enrichment activities to really solidify it in their mind. And you should, you know, like the crossword puzzles, the search and finds or whatever, those solidify the words, the concepts and things in children's minds. So we should use those things. Okay, so back to my reading here on the Kaiser. Uh, oh, I already did that. Okay, that's fine. All right, so let me uh, continue reading here. It says, um, here's another bit of information concerning TV viewing. The amount of violence on television is on the rise. By the age of 18 years, the average child, the child, I'm sorry, the child would on average have viewed 200,000 acts of violence on television. Now remember, this book was written, you know, back in 2003. That's 19 years ago. Now, I just showed you the, the latest Kaiser research, and that was the latest I could find, and that was actually like 2009. <laughs> what do you think it is now? How much time are they spending in front of a screen every day now? Do you think it's down? Oh no, it's way up because since COVID, they have to sit in front of a screen to watch their teacher in the classroom because they weren't going to school, <laughs> right? And some of them are still doing that. They're still doing online classes. So they were watching the screen all day long, all night long when they got off the, you know, the school, the online school. They're sitting in front of a screen quite a bit okay and it's having an effect it has an effect on me you know I spend a lot of time doing research on the computer I have to wear my glasses because I can't see anything on the computer and it messes my eyesight up okay and when I take my glasses off and I look at you I'm seeing double or I'm seeing I can barely see okay so I know it must be doing the same thing to our children you know so we got to be careful. We've got to be guarding our children against these things and, and, and trying to get them away from these things. I remember when I was young, my parents would say, you are not going to sit on that couch and watch that TV show. You're going to go out and mow the lawn or you're going to do something. Okay, but you're not going to sit here on this, you know, when it was summertime and we wanted to sit around and watch whatever it was, cartoons. My parents made us go outside and do something in, in the yard or something to get us out of that mode of thinking we got to sit there all day and watch a television set. And I'm thankful for that. Okay, so it says the content of movies is basically identical to what's on television, except that the violence is more graphic. What was the last movie you saw? On a scale of 1 to 10, where 1 is no violence and 10 is a lot of violence, what score would you give it? 
If you're like most people, your score would be somewhere between 8 and or 10. And I've, I've asked this question to all my students since, since I've been teaching classes in 2002, and every one of them had always said something between 8 and 10, almost every time. So this is true. This holds true. It appears that violence and action continue to attract moviegoers. In fact, the more action and violence the movie contains, the more people want to see it. I just proved that through the top grossing films. These were violent films. Nothing but violence all through the film, okay? And that's what's attracting people to these movies. It says, many studies prove that witnessing repeated acts of violence could influence you to choose violence as a means of solving conflicts. How does this show self-control? The answer is, it doesn't. It doesn't show self-control when we use violence to settle the score or settle our problem or try to find a solution to the problem. That's not the, the proper solution. Bringing harm to anyone is not the solution. Even though they try to make it look normal, they try to glorify war in the movies. Some of the top grossing films in history have been war movies. Some of the most Famous movies have been war movies or cowboy movies, you know, where they have the gunfight, you know, we're going to settle the score, you know, they had the, you know, what do they call those, a draw, you know, uh, the draw where they went outside and they, you know, took 10 paces and turned around and shot each other and whoever hit the other one first or whoever had a better aim was the hero, <laughs> right? That's not the way to settle the score, you know, that's not the peaceful solution, but that's, that's what we're being taught through television, you know, because remember, the people that are making these movies, they're in it for the money, and they have not been taught that if they actually went the other way, they could make films that promote positive character, and they could still make great movies, because I've seen some movies that promoted some great things, that I really enjoyed that didn't have any violence, any sexual content or anything in it. They just don't realize that there's really more money, more glory, so to speak, in making positive things than the negative things. They just haven't learned that yet, but they will one day, and you'll be the ones to teach them. So let's look at page 123. Let's look at the violence continues. This is about as far as we'll get tonight. We'll talk a little bit about these video games because I got we we've got a we've talked about it before. Okay, I've, I've talked about it before. David, Katan, Chris, you know about the violence and the media violence. You know the TVs, the movies, the video games, etc. But as you progress in the peaceful solution, it's a constant reminder because these are the things that have the biggest effect on people. Because I just showed you. People are spending most of their time watching entertainment. They're being entertained by these, by these movies and television shows and video games, and the content is quite, quite disturbing, okay? So it says, the violence continues. Another significant source of violence and entertainment comes from video games. With modern technology, video games have become more realistic and interactive than ever before. There are currently video games that simulate violence so realistically that they incorporate the sound of breaking bones. Visual effects include gushing blood from mortal wounds. Mortal meaning, you know, a death wound. You know, somebody stabs you or shoots you and blood comes gushing out and you die. <clears throat> you know, those interactive games. Uh, can you put up the next visual? Um... I was reading about the, the, the Uvalde shooter, uh, Salvador Ramos, uh, on, in, the Sun, in the Sun advertisement, in the Sun newspaper, it said, uh, Texas shooter Salvador Ramos was a Call of Duty obsessed loner who cut his own face and shot strangers with BB gun. Okay, well, you know, I don't know what this boy actually did, but I do know that he was involved in video game watching, okay? In fact, I'm going to show you here in a minute the very, the very video he was playing the night before the shooting took place. And it's an online interactive game. You know, they have these interactive online games where up to four to five players can get together, you know, with their headsets, and, you know, they're located in different places, and they have interactive war games, okay? And, um... If you go to the next slide, this is the one he was playing the night before. It was called Dead by Daylight. 
Now, Wikipedia explains that Dead by Daylight is a survival horror asymmetric multiplayer online game developed by Behavior Interactive. What a name, right? <laughs> Behavior Interactive. Oh, what kind of behavior do you think this is going to produce? Well, let's see. Here's what the object of the game is. It is a one versus four game in which one player takes on the role of a savage killer and the other play, the other four play as survivors. The killer must catch each survivor and sacrifice them to a malevolent force known as the entity by impaling them on hooks. This is from Wikipedia. I'm not making this up. This is how they describe the game. Um, while the survivors must avoid being caught and fix five generators to open the exit gates to try to get away from the killer, I suppose, right? Now, surely this is the game that all parents want to buy for their children, right? They want their children to, to learn how to avoid this savage killer who's trying to destroy their life, you know? This is what parents really want for their children. Do you realize that most parents that buy these things, they don't even know what the content is. They don't even check it. Their child that says, hey, mom, I heard I want to get dead by daylight, you know, or, you know, uh, I want to get black ops or I want to get uh, uh, the one I heard about back in 2004. The mother uh, bought their daughter. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, what was that video game that's so popular that everybody always used back in the 2000s? Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Thank you. Yeah, she bought her daughter Grand Theft Auto and... Uh, when I explained what that was in the Peaceful Solution class, <laughs> her eight-year-old daughter, she looked at her daughter and said, that's why you were driving like that? <laughs> you know, be because the object of the game was to run over people. You know, you get points for running over people and stealing their cars and etc. And the mom didn't know that. She just thought, I just thought she was driving crazy because that's part of the game. She didn't check the content. And once she learned about it, her daughter and her went home, and they destroyed those video games. And those cost them upwards of $50 a game, even back then. Okay? But they destroyed the game. They, they realized how, how detrimental it was. They saw how negative it was and the effect it was having on their, on their character, on the daughter's character. And she willingly did it herself. Okay, so... Um, okay, so... Uh, uh, okay, let me continue reading. It says, video games have become a very popular form of entertainment. Some people have been known to play them for hours at a time. They have themes that allow players to work for the mob, hijack cars, and kill cops and civilians. Do we teach disrespect for authority in the peaceful solution? Killing cops? We don't teach to kill anybody. We don't teach to bring harm to anybody. We shouldn't be teaching to bring harm to any form of life. Okay? You know, unless you're hunting for food and it's proper, I mean, you shouldn't be just out there shooting animals, you know, just for trophy or for, for, for fun, shooting birds just because you have a gun and you can. You know, that's not proper, okay? You should respect all life. We, we've, we teach respect for life, and we teach respect for the authority here. We don't teach disrespect for authority in any way, shape, or form. It says, other video games allow the player to be part of the mob and run a prostitution ring. Now, every, every parent wants their child to do that, right? To run a prostitution ring? To be a pimp? Right? That's what all parents want for their children? No. But the parents are blindly getting these things because they don't really understand what their children are getting into. And even if they do understand, by the time they get it and they realize the damage is done to the child, the child's like, you're not taking it back from me. You gave it to me. And then their parent, not wanting to make a war with their children, they're like, all right, all right, you know. And they give in. <laughs> no, you can't give in. We need to, as parents, we need to tell them, hey, I made a mistake. I should have never done that. I'm not going to allow that in my house. Okay? Because you are the guardian of your house if you're a parent. If you allow your children to watch these things, to play these things, you are responsible for the outcome. I can't be any more blunt than that. If you allow your children to partake of this kind of stuff on television, 
or the movies or the video games, you are just as responsible as the child that's playing them. It says, other objects include running civilians over in high-speed car chases and being a gang leader who has the power to execute other gang members and members of rival gangs. It says, many people say that entertainment today is just harmless fun. Surely looking at violent movies and playing violent games will not affect my character. I can still control myself. Can you? Can you keep from going in the elementary school? And, and, and acting out what you saw in the video game? If you get upset about something and you lose your ability to have self-control and you lose control, do you think you're going to have the ability? Let's go to my final, uh, my final visual. I want to talk to you about something. You know, right now today in the Senate, they're voting on gun control measures. Okay, because of the Uvalde shooting and some other shootings in Buffalo and other places. You know, are we really this confused? Are we really this confused? Is it the guns that kill people? You know, you can teach self-control all day to a gun and it's still, it won't move. It, it doesn't have the ability to move. <laughs> It's not the gun that's out of control. Even though myself personally, I've never owned a gun. I don't want a gun. Don't have any use for it. I know some people have guns because they use them for hunting and etc. So, okay. But is taking away guns or making gun-free school zones going to keep someone from going into an elementary school if they want to do harm to somebody? Is is Raising the age limit of guns going to keep someone from getting a gun and going and doing their dirty work? No, they're going to get the gun. They're going to get, even if they didn't have guns, you could melt all the guns in the world. You could melt them into, and turn them into something else, and they'll still use knives or rocks or their fists, their hands. They'll strangle someone to death or something, right? So how is that going to solve the problem? We need to ask our senators. Let's get real. How is this going to solve the problem? And using Hollywood actors to push gun control, the very actors that use guns in the movies, that's realistic? That's going to that's gonna make a difference? People aren't buying into this. Pe people that don't want their guns taken, they're afraid of the military and the police. They're afraid. They don't want their guns taken because they've seen other countries where the guns were taken and they've seen the result of how they were treated when the guns were taken. So people are afraid to have their guns taken. So if we really want to take the guns, let's start with the military. Let's disarm all the military first. Then the police can get rid of their guns, and then everyone else can get rid of theirs, and we'll have, we'll have, we'll have gun control finally, right? Because that's really the only way you're going to do it, with the, with the mindset of the people the way it is right now. But do we really need gun control, or do we need self-control? What do you think? What would be better, to teach self-control from the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program or take the guns away or these gun measures? What do you think is going to stop the violence? Yeah, the moral character education. That's the only thing that can stop someone from desiring to take someone else's life. Changing a law? There's millions of laws out there right now. That doesn't stop anyone from breaking these laws. But when you teach them moral education, guess what? It changes the heart and mind where they don't want to bring harm to somebody. That's what works. So if you senators are watching, you know, before your vote, I mean, you might have already voted, but for future measures, you might want to consider the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program being taught in all the schools so we can put an end to these kind of things. And we can bring the mental health of people back up. Because, you know, even breaking these peaceful solution ru rules is bringing the mental health of people down to where they can't make a sensible decision. So we need to be thinking about these things. You know, if we would, we, we would implement the peaceful solution everywhere, we could see a huge increase in violence even within 30 days of, of, of putting this into, into use. So that's all the time we have tonight. Um, 
The next teacher will be Catan, and he'll be picking up where I just left off on page number 123, right there in the middle where it says, not as harmless as you might think. Okay, that's where we'll be picking up on 615? No, 16, right? Oh, you're right. 615. I should listen to him, not... <laughs> 615 uh, on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Central Time, okay? Stay cool. Keep practicing the peaceful solution. We'll see you next time.